Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. Uh, in this video I will briefly introduce a long-term project called EDIA. The goal of this project is to design and test a methodology that allows social scientists and domain experts in Latin America to explore social biases present in word embeddings. In the short paper, uh, we present a, an abstract of this project. The goal is to investigate, the goal of the whole project is to investigate how domain experts and social scientists can transfer their domain knowledge through representation of lexical resources that they can uh, observe, analyze and manipulate intuitively, resorting to their expertise to assess both hypothesized and emergent biases that they can observe. The project is currently carried out by an interdisciplinary team. The first authors, uh, the first four people that you see in the left, including myself, uh, are the authors of this abstract, but our uh, team is larger. The four people in the middle are our social scientists and human rights activists, and the last two in the right are our mathematicians. This project is managed by an NGO called Via Libre, who is devoted to analyzing how computational technology impact on human rights. And this project is funded by the Feminist Network on Artificial Intelligence, which seeks to, uh, to have a global conversation on uh, how algorithms affect gender, race, class, region um, through their behavior. So I am Luciana Benotti and I have many hats in the ACL. I'm currently the chair of the NACL uh, exec board. I'm also a member at large of the ACL ethics committee representing uh, the America continent together with Julia Svelkov and Mark Treste. And in this talk, I'm representing the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba, where I am an associate professor in Argentina, and the NGO Via Libre, where I am a principal researcher. So, just uh, to give a definition of what we mean with bias, here is one from the Oxford uh, Dictionary. It is an inclination or prejudice for or against one person or group in a way that is considered unfair. For example, there was evidence of bias against foreign applicants. And this is a very generic uh, definition, it, but it's the one that, uh, that we use in this project. And I wanted to introduce this because uh, this workshop is, uh, comes from different areas uh, in natural language processing. So in particular, I want to st start this talk showing some examples of how bias in Spanish is different from uh, bias in English and how we as users of uh, language technologies experience these biases every day. The first example is in search. So this example is in English. If you write in Google, poor people are, Google does not uh, suggest auto completions for this prompt. Um, however, if you write the same phrase in Spanish, there are autocompletions. And autocompletions say things like, poor people are responsible of their own, uh, of being poor. Poor people are poor because they chose to be poor. Poor uh, people are a business in the world, and so on. Already showing different uh, sorts of biases. So this is for search. Now, if we move to translation, uh, for instance, a tool that is very much used in Latin America is uh, Google Translate. And here we see an example translating from English to Spanish the phrase, the programmer is successful. So when we translate this phrase that has a noun phrase, the programmer, in Spanish, uh, we have to decide which gender we are going to use because all noun phrases or most noun phrases are marked with uh, morphological gender. So here we see two translations, one for feminine and the other one from masculine, which is great. However, if we move to a phrase that has not only one noun phrase, but two noun phrases, for instance, uh, the phrase in Spanish on the left means the female programmer called the male uh, nanny, 
this is where this is translated by Google Translate uh, without taking into account the gender of the noun phrases. Now, if we translate back that same phrase to Spanish, the, the genders change. So it doesn't say anymore the female programmer called the male nanny, but it says the uh, male programmer called the um, female nanny. So these were examples of how the bias impacts uh, Spanish speaking community uh, through the applications of natural language technologies. Now let's go to the methodology that we are uh, exploring. One of the methodologies for, um, for investigating biases that has been used uh, in the area. You can see the relevant references in the paper. And what we show in this example that you will find also in the paper is that um, when we apply this methodology of analyzing what's the bias of, of a certain list of words here shown in the left of the graph, like queen, nurse, swing, care, and so on. Uh, we see uh, with this methodology that some words are more um, are biased towards feminine, like queen, which makes sense because this is uh, a female uh, royal person. And uh, also other words like nurse, which is not, uh, does not determine gender, is also associated to feminine. So this is already showing a bias uh, in the word nurse towards uh, female. Uh, and in um, orange, you can see those words that are um, biased towards uh, male, like surgeon or fight or salary or leader. Now, when we translate these words to Spanish directly, as is done in some previous work in the area also, um, we see that the biases of these words are not the same as those in English. So from this, we can observe two things. First, the metrics that um, are calculated uh, in, in most work that use word embeddings for analyzing uh, bias, uh, in particular words, the, the value of the metric itself depends very deeply on the list of words that are selected. And, um, and in many, in many cases also, this list of words are directly translated to other languages without taking into account differences, linguistic differences, or use differences between this language. For instance, here we can observe that when we translate nurse to nurse in Spanish, in Spanish we say male nurse. So it makes sense that this is not associated to female, but to male. And this is what we observe in Spanish. However, we also see some other uh, words that uh, change directions, like uh, care, that in Spanish we translate as cuidar. So um, this could be because care can be also used as a noun in, in English, but it, cuidar cannot be used as a noun in Spanish. So this is a hypothesis for us. Um, that also happens with the verb wash, to wash. Uh, that can also be used as a, as a noun in English. Uh, but lavar, that is the translation to Spanish, cannot be used as a noun. However, it doesn't hold for all, for all words, because for instance, we see here that win can also be used as a noun in English, but it does not change gender direction. So these are all hypotheses to see what, what are the differences that we observe uh, in the analysis, in the methods for analyzing biases in different languages that uh, in this project we say need to be studied deeper and more and taking into account the linguistic differences between the languages and also the cultural difference, differences between the communities that uh, produce this, this language. So uh, our conclusion is that it's necessary to audit bias and stereotypes in more language models 
not only in English. And we know, and in our paper, we cite uh, a work that does this, but uh, this is a call to do this more systematically and, and to have more uh, people involved in, in this task. And in particular, for instance, something concrete is this is a call to add a language diversity track in the ACL tracks so that these kind of works can find a place where, uh, where to be uh, evaluated by people with these uh, same uh, goals. So the project has uh, two contributions to summarize what I said uh, before. First, uh, we analyzed uh, these uh, bias techniques that has been used for English and show that it's uh, quite different what we observe in Spanish. <clears throat> we uh, believe that a detailed analysis in this direction would be a very important finding for the community, as we reviewers said, as our reviewers said for this uh, uh, abstract. And uh, also in this project, we proposed a, a prototype for uh, involving social scientists and domain experts to explore these uh, word embeddings that I illustrated before and also for exploring language models. So now I'm going to show you our prototype. This is our prototype uh, that is ongoing work. Now uh, the interface is in Spanish, but we also have uh, the interface of this tool in English. Here uh, we've made some workshops for social scientists to explore in an, this interactive tool, uh, the uh, BIAX exploration that I was showing you before. Uh, here we have some professions like nurse, engineering, uh, um, construction workers, informatics and uh, lawyer. Uh, in the graph uh, that, uh, in a similar graph that I was showing you before, that shows, for instance, that construction working and informatics engineering is biased towards male. Uh, for instance, uh, imagine that here we have a domain expert developing a tool for um, a, for helping people that want to decide what to study, helping young people, and uh, then they analyze the language, the word embeddings that are behind. Uh, so here, uh, what they asked is that they wanted to, to see how these representations are uh, graphed uh, in the, uh, how they are associated according to meaning. So we use PCA to show this to them. And for instance, here they can explore uh, how uh, the different professions um, are related to other professions. And here we see that a, a nurse is related to physiotherapy therapy, for instance, and they can use this to extend their list of words and see whether uh, physiotherapy is associated more to female, to male or to female. And we see here it's more associated to female. Um, and they can also use this for um, intersection and intersectional. So intersection of different biases that is uh, uh, they can graph uh, four stereotypes. Uh, here I'm uh, merging uh, gender with um, uh, overweight or um, so I'm comparing gender with uh, thin and, and fat uh, stereotypes, stereotypes related to weight. And we see, for instance, that construction worker is more related to uh, fat uh, that is represented with the words gordo and gorda in Spanish. And for instance, lawyer is more related to thin. Um, and then also uh, they ask us to, um, to be able to explore uh, when the profession uh, includes more than one word. For instance, landscaper in Spanish is called diseñador de jardines. So here uh, we are not exploring uh, word embeddings. Uh, with independent tokens, but we are exploring uh, language models. In this case, the language model behind this tool is called Beto, that is uh, a Spanish version of uh, GPT-2. Uh, they also asked uh, uh, to see what, what was the source of the, of the data that was behind these models. So here, uh, um, the social scientists have access to the different data sets 
and to fragments of these data sets in which the words that they are uh, analyzing, for instance, here the word flaco, that means thin in Spanish, is analyzed. Well, this is our prototype and thank you very much for watching this video.